Hello viewers, welcome to another episode of Golang Angular Tutorial. This uh, tutorial subject will be REST, so I went ahead and built a REST backend in Go, and I consumed that backend with Angular, uh, and I created this bookshelf service. So as you can see, I have a list of books here on the left. If I click on them, it loads it along with the author. Um, I can update this. And you can see it loads in right there. Uh, I can remove books and I can add books. I just put these jinky prompts in for now. Obviously, you'd want to have something a little more elegant than that. But yeah, that's what I've created. So let's go ahead and dive into the code. Okay, so last episode, you watched me write some Go code. And uh, we didn't do a whole lot of Angular, so this episode we're just going to go over what I've already written in Go, and then we're going to write the Angular. Uh, so just a few highlights from this file. Um, we're not using a database. We're using an in-memory structure. So we have a list here of books, and uh, the book model is right here. Uh, one interesting thing to note is that since we're using the JSON coding library, our um, book structure needs to have exported members so that's why these all begin with an uppercase uh, otherwise the JSON um, marshalling when it uses reflection it wouldn't be able to access these member variables so we have to make sure they have uppercase letters so they're exported but typically you don't use uppercase letters when you create JSON structures so we have this additional notation that will lowercase those again and you can set these to anything obviously but that's just something interesting to note Let's jump down to the bottom to the main method here. So this should look pretty familiar if you were in the previous episode. Uh, one thing to note is uh, we have this handful of books handlers um, that were added. And uh, the Gorilla Mux library gives you this cool filter ability. So this is uh, the builder pattern. We are basically saying if somebody hits the books resource and they're using the method get, then they should use the list books handler. Same for post, add book. Um, we, we're also using variable ID, and that's one of the big points of why we're using the Gorilla Mux library because Go's built in routing doesn't have that. You'd have to write that yourself. Uh, another, thing, uh, another thing to note is the file handler is now only serving up files that appear under uh, the static directory. Actually, it's serving everything from the web directory still, but from the outside, it looks like it's coming from static. Um, here we're bootstrapping some data, so once you start up, you should see uh, this uh, data here. So let's go look at some of the REST resources. Well, first, let me mention, um, if you notice down here in the main method, we're using handle instead of handle func, and we're wrapping each of our methods in this handler type. Uh, the reason that we're doing this is because this gives us um, essentially a wrapper around each of our methods that we can do common things. So this is where we invoke our uh, REST resource handler, and then we get the response out. So typically it's going to return a book or the list of books, and then we're going to check to make sure there are no errors, and we're going to marshal the JSON. Um, so in that way, we don't have to have the same code copy and pasted across all of our resources. And the reason why we use this serve HTTP method is because that's what this handle method expects. So if I go look at the Go libraries, it, uh, the second parameter is this handler interface, which is identical to ours, so that satisfies it, so it can accept it as the second parameter. So that's essentially what that serve HTTP is. It's just a good place to put some common code. So now let's look at the resources. The list books resource couldn't be simpler, it just returns the list. Uh, the git book resource, uh, the only thing of note here I'd say is um, in order to extract that ID from the path, we use mux vars, and as pretty straightforward as it is, it, we get the book by that ID and then we return it. Uh, parse book request isn't actually a resource, but it's used by the add and update book um, resource. It's just the common commonality between them. Uh, so we consume the body as a essentially it's a stream. So we consume that, and then using that. Uh, array of bytes that we get, we unmarshal it into a book payload and return it. So then the add and update can uh, mess around with the payload. 
And then finally we have the remove book, with, which looks just like the get book. Uh, the difference is it deletes. So this is something you see in Go a lot. There's no delete on slices. So you essentially have to work around that. Um, and in this case, we're using a pen to do that. So essentially what this is doing is we're creating a slice of the books from the beginning to the index, but not including the index, which is the item that we want to delete. And then we skip over that index and append the remainder of those items. So we just essentially exclude that, which then is like a delete operation. So that's basically it. We have a few other helpers around here, but I'll just let you explore this code. Uh, and let's just dive into the HTML. So if you've already downloaded the code at home, you might notice that there is a file called Books Design. And what I did was I went ahead and did all the HTML, but none of the JavaScript. So this is what I want one of the application to look like when I finished up, um, but none of the Angular's written yet. So let's go do that now. You can see we have all the HTML in place, but none of the Angular is written yet. So let's just go right up here and start doing that. So first, we're probably going to want to get our list of books working. And in order to do that, we're going to use the ng repeat directive. And what this directive does is it repeats the element that it's on um, when it finds that there is a variable on the scope called books. And it'll call locally. It'll call each of these books uh, by B. So then I can reference B right here. So B title will print out what the title is in that list. So let's get this hooked up. Uh, one of the nice things about Angular is it has something called resource, and this works really well for um, REST implementations like this. It's not built in anymore, so you have to include it externally like this, um, additionally like this, I should say. And then we have to add it to our dependencies here. And then you're, you're able to inject it into your controllers like this. Uh, so normally I would define my resource in a service, but since we only have one controller, I'm just going to do it here. So I'm going to call this resource book. The first parameter you give it is um, your URL. Second parameter is any path variables. And the third parameter is um, used for custom routes. But we, the way I designed the Go backend is it fits into this perfectly, so we don't have to define any. So if I wouldn't have put this ID here, and we would call this with an ID, um, it would automatically append arguments like this. Uh, but since I did define it here, it's going to recognize that there's something in here called ID, and it will replace it on the path. So that's just something to note if you have problems later. That's probably what you forgot. OK, so up here, once again, we need to have a variable called books. So if we call book query at this point, and if we go and reload, look at that. There's all of our books, and essentially two lines of JavaScript. And uh, what's even cooler about this is we don't have to use jQuery here to do any DOM manipulation. It's all just handled for you with that ng repeat up there. So the next thing we might want to do is get these uh, books loaded when we click on this. So let's go do that right now. We're going to be interested in this link right here. We're going to use the ng click directive and call something called git and give it the book. So everything in these directives, you can um, kind of assume that they're JavaScript-like. So in this case, we're passing the entire book object into this method called git, which we haven't written yet. So let's go do that. So git is a function which takes a book. And we want to call book.git. Our resource takes an ID. So we give it that book ID. Uh, the second parameter to I think all of the resource uh, methods is a function which is a callback once the promise is fulfilled it will call this callback so we probably need uh, some kind of variable to say that we have selected this book um, so let's call it selected and initially we're gonna want this to be null 
So once, uh, once this actually gets the data, it will put it in selected. So then up here, instead of saying title, we would say our selected title. Instead of author, selected author. So let's see if that worked. Yep, there you go. So you'll notice when I refreshed, we have some stuff that doesn't make sense because I haven't selected anything. So we need to hide that. To do that, we're going to go up here to the entire div of that middle section. We're going to say ng um, show selected. And also for this one. So what this directive does is if this is true, it will show the section. So that means that it will be hidden at first. And since selected, we set as null until it actually gets a value, it should be hidden. So let's go test that now. Refresh. Yep, it's gone. And once you click, it comes back. Excellent. Next, let's hook up uh, removing of books. Actually, first, um, you might have noticed when I click over here, it doesn't actually select an item. So let's do that. Uh, with a little directive called ng class. So in order to get something to look like it's selected, we need to say class equals active. So this should make everything active. It does. But we only want the one that is selected active. So we need to use ng class, which takes a hash. Uh, the key is the name of the class that you want to apply and the value is when it is true it will apply that class so we'll say if the selected title equals this book's title then make it active there we go piece of cake okay now let's get the remove this book to work so the remove this book button is right here. So what we want to do is do an ng click on this button. Which is essentially the same as if we were to use the um, A tag. And we're going to call remove selected. This is essentially the same as the git. Um, the difference is our scope selected is actually already a book object, so all we really need to do is call delete on that. I think this should be it. Yep. So uh, what I've done is actually delete it, but as you can see, I haven't updated my uh, list. So Let's go back over here to the code. And uh, we'll call book query again. That way it updates our list. So, yep, that's gone. That's gone. That's gone. Yep. So, while it looks like everything's working correctly, we actually have a race condition right here. Uh, I was hoping it would manifest, but it didn't. Um, you have to remember that each of these is a non-blocking call, so it's going to fire off a delete and it's going to fire off a query. Depending on which one of those comes back first, you might see a problem, you might not. So similar to up above, we're going to use uh, pass in a function that will be a callback for when this promise is, uh, completes, then it'll do the query so we know that we aren't going to get uh, right before the delete occurs. Uh, so that's the same as this. It just it's just a method that gets called afterwards. So let's go ahead and reload our Go server so that it gives us back all of our bootstrapped items. And let's look on, work on the add book next. So let's go up to where our add book button is. Just like the others, we can do an ng click 
this time not pass it anything because this is an ad. Okay, so I'm just going to paste in these prompts. Uh, again, you probably don't want to do something like this if this is a real application because it looks pretty messy. Uh, but we want to create a new book. And we want to set the title to whatever they entered. Same for the author. And then we want to do save. And then again, a callback that we learned before just above so when that completes we're gonna get a new set of books so let's refresh there we go piece of cake we are gonna remove it now let's do our update method so we're gonna go find our update no big surprise here, ng click date select. Okay, once again we're gonna ask for a title and an author, uh, but this time we actually have some defaults that we can put in. Just help them out a little bit when they're editing. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say the book title should be equal to title. Same for that, book.save. Okay, it looks like that's working. So I'm going to make some minor changes. And as you can see, we still have some usability issues, but it does do the update. Um, so those usability issues, there are a few. I made this intentionally so that it would be simple. Um, why don't you go ahead and try making all of those issues go away. And once you think you've got them all, go look at the code on GitHub. I've actually fixed all those myself. Um, it's slightly different than the code I just wrote but it was more complicated to explain, so I thought I'd do it this way. So that's it for this episode. Uh, let me know if you liked it. You can comment, uh, subscribe if you want to see what's coming up next. And that's it.